Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So, the eagle-eyed of you will have noticed if you watched yesterday's video about my plans for 2019, that I said it was 2019 already and that I was wishing you all Happy New Year. Well, that's because somehow I managed to uh, basically, to frankly, to balls up the scheduling for it and it went live a day early. It was meant to be today, Tuesday's video. However, it went live a day early. So, with all my plans for 2019, I couldn't possibly leave a gap in Tuesday's video. And as you know, Tuesdays are now the board games night. So I thought I'd tell you about my New Year's Eve, which actually turned into a very much board gaming New Year's Eve. I've already recorded this once and forgot to turn the power onto the microphone. So let's hope I can be as succinct as I was last time. So we started the night and um, Jason and I, so Jason you'll have seen on the channel who played The Walking Dead uh, live on the Monday night live stream. Um, he and I are, are related to our, our wives and sisters. So um, Jason and his wife and their children came and stayed at our house last night. And what we'd normally do at a new year is Jason and I would nip off down the pub for a couple of quiet beers while the kids kind of burn themselves out. Instead, last night we decided to have a few board games instead and have a few beers at home. So we started the night with Resident Evil 2 by Steamforge Games. So this um, shipped to me in late December. I backed the Kickstarter in November 2017. So it took just over a year to, uh, to arrive. And it is essentially, it's a pretty standard type of dungeon crawler, um, but with the Resident Evil theme around the rules and around obviously the artwork and the miniatures. I would say the game really does capture the theme of Resident Evil. So if you're a big fan of the series or you're, you're kind of nostalgia for the old games, or you're getting ready for the Resident Evil 2 remake that is due earlier this year, then uh, I think you'll, I I think you'll like it. I won't go into too much detail as I've got a review coming up later on this month. But the miniatures are, are decent enough sculpts. They're a little smaller than you would uh, sort of be used to from sort of miniature games, if you like. And uh, that's kind of maybe I wouldn't say upset a few people, but they're not as happy about the miniatures as they could have been. And um, for me personally, they're, they're scaled right for the board size, so you can get four miniatures inside one square. Um, I like the detail. I like some of the little. Um, alternative stuff as well that came with the Kickstarter but yeah we'll go into a full review of that later on in the month but hasten to say we really enjoyed it we then broke out Brothers by Ankama Games and um, if you haven't already seen I've done a review of this on the channel so I'll put a link to it up the top there so you can go and watch that if you want to and um, essentially it's a tile placing game where your um, one player has kind of L-shaped tiles one player has sort of straight tiles and you're trying to capture as much territory as you can with them. Um, the balance being, do I try and get mine played as quickly as I can, or do I strategize around trying to, to block out my opponent from placing theirs? Um, really enjoyed it, played kind of, uh, I think we played maybe four games of it. Um, it plays in about 15 minutes, so it's quite a fast game to just reset and go again. Um, I don't think Jason was as keen on it, because he's not into that kind of puzzle, sort of solving type game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I enjoy it and me and my wife play it quite often. So we were, uh, we were doing all right for time at this point. So we decided to break out. Here's Negan um, by Mantic Games. And as I mentioned, Jason and I play Walking Dead together. We went down to the Winter's End tournament in Stockport back end of last year. So Jason's familiar with uh, the Walking Dead, the, the mechanics of kind of attacking and defense and that kind of things, uh, and the stat cards. So we set that up. We played through the training mission again. It's training day, I think it's called, the first scenario. Um, was going okay. We were kind of making progress through it. Um, I ended up getting surrounded by walkers. I was killed. Jason was left on his own. He got absolutely surrounded as well. Uh, I think I took a picture of it last night because it got so out of control. If I did, I'll put it, I'll drop it in here. Um, but yeah, and again, enjoyed the game. I think Jason felt that there was a few more steps in the game than there was in Resident Evil. I think he preferred the Resident Evil game because it seemed a bit more straightforward. But we were playing the sort of intro mission for Resident Evil, and I think as it's kind of as you get in later rounds, it ramps up a little bit. So I think maybe it wasn't a fair comparison. But yeah, we we had a good game, really enjoyed it. But that that first kind of training day scenario, it's a hard hard day to train. Um, so then yeah, we went, um, spent a little bit of time with the kids. The kids went off to bed. We had a bit of food, had some drinks, um, and after food, the four of us played timelines. So for those that are not aware what timelines is, um, there's a whole range of these where they're basically different um, 
different topics if you like this one is the general interest one i bought that one a while ago just as a starting point and essentially what you get are you get decks of cards which are these smaller kind of fantasy flights uh, size and they have things on them such as the invention of the mechanical washing machine which was invented in 1765 for those that were in, uh, worrying uh, worrying for those that were interested and what you do is that goes that first card goes down and makes the timeline and then each player gets a number of cards um, and you need to decide where your card fits on that timeline so when you're starting out it's either going to be before 1765 or after 1765 um, but then as you get more and more into the timeline it becomes a lot harder as years get closer together and it's hard to know where to fit them in um, it's a kind of game I, I wouldn't say it's fun's maybe not the right word it's an interesting game and it's I do enjoy playing it however um, it's the kind of game where you want to talk, you want to be quite social about it and you want to say, oh, I remember seeing sort of traffic lights in a film ages ago that was Sherlock Holmes or something. And you want to try and kind of reason with people and try and talk through your ideas about where something fits on a timeline. However, because other people are trying to beat you, the, 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 the aim of the game is to be the first person to play all of your cards. If you get one wrong, you have to draw another card from the, card from the pile. Um, so because everyone's competing against each other, you end up kind of sitting thinking in silence and, and that doesn't, it doesn't promote a very kind of social game. So we played a couple of games of it, we enjoyed it, we were having a laugh about it and stuff because we, we had a few drinks by that point. However, um, it's, it's a fun game, it's just not very social, maybe it wasn't the right, the right game for our setting. It's the kind of thing that's quite good for... You know, little gaps between games, or when somebody, when you, when you're playing a big kind of sort of um, a big board game, and a couple of people are out, it's a nice little side game just to kind of sort of to play while everybody else finishes up. Then later on in the night, um, my wife and her sister uh, Lisa decided to uh, have a game of Brothers, which I showed you before, which is the tile placement game. Um, I mentioned Jason's not really into those puzzle type games. He did say that's the kind of thing Lisa would like. So she um, she had a game of that with my wife. And they played a few games of that. And while they played that, uh, Jason and I broke out Keyforge. Jason had picked up a deck a little while ago and um, hadn't played it yet. So we cracked open the starter box. We just used the two starter decks that come with it. Just um, to, to kind of introduce him to the game, get his head around it. But for those that are not don't know much about Keyforge. It's one of um, Fantasy Flight Games' new unique games, which means there's no two versions the same. So if you pick up uh, one of these uh, Keyforge deck packs, I think in the UK they're around eight or nine pounds. If you pick up one of these decks, you get a sealed deck inside there, and that is a unique deck. Nobody else will have that exact same deck. It has a unique name on it and um, there's no deck building to the game. It's a, it plays a little bit like sort of Magic the Gathering, if you like, in that kind of playing cards and sort of tapping them and untapping them, ready and unreadying them, um, and playing a guess, a, a across from each other. However, that's where the similarities end. This is a pre-constructed deck. You play with just what's in there. You don't add cards to it. You don't deck build. You don't take cards out. That's your deck. If it's, if it's a good deck, <laughs> enjoy playing it. If it's a poor deck, you can try and kind of crack the secret of it or just go and buy another deck essentially that's basically how the game works now fantasy fight have also recently brought out another board game called i need to try and remember what it's called now i remembered when the, when my microphone was turned off um i'm going to find out what it is a few moments later so fantasy flight have another game which is part of their unique range which is called discover lands unknown and the unique part of it is that no two boxed board games are exactly the same so the cards inside that come um, are all sort of there's there'll be variants between every single different uh, board game box which i think is quite a nice little selling point it's something quite clever and um, no idea what difference it makes to the game whether it unbalances anything but yeah it's quite a, a neat little mechanic so yeah I, basically i wasn't i wasn't planning on making a video today i just thought i'd um, just do something quite quick seeing as how our, our um, new year's eve turned into very much a board gaming night it was nice to play sort of that amount of games in one evening it was also nice to kind of play with what i would class as like sort of not not traditional gamers if you like um jason's starting to get into it now but certainly um, my wife and her sister they like board games but they wouldn't kind of play anything outside of their normal comfort zone if you like so it was quite nice to break some stuff out and play some different bits and pieces so 
Tomorrow you'll be able to see on the miniatures and war games. Uh, Wednesday you'll be able to see my new army for 2019. As I teased in yesterday's video that should have been today. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing for more board gaming stuff and more miniature stuff too if you're into that. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.